Hey everyone, and welcome to Rise Above It, the official podcast of the Rise Business Community, where we talk about goals, failures, success, and how to navigate the pursuit of dreams. You're on with your host, Jeff Noth, and myself, Stuart Campbell. Thank you for joining us. Our first guest is Derek Griffin, owner of Hardwood Evolution, an elite basketball skills training program out of Denver, which recently expanded to West Michigan. Derek is a graduate of Calvin College with a degree in sports management, playing briefly with the West Michigan pro team, the Grand Rapids Flight, before heading out to Denver and essentially helping launch the Denver Nuggets youth training program. In 2015, he was the captain of the Denver 3-on-3 FIBA basketball team that won the national title and placed eighth in the world in the championships. After six years leading the Nuggets youth program, he branched off on his own and started Hardwood Evolution. But as we know, where and how we end up depends a lot on our upbringing and early confidence and self-awareness builders. Uh, Derek, let's just start by going, going back, back to the early days. Uh, Why basketball? Because you were a multi-sport athlete, semi-decent at baseball, just kidding. Uh, And you even set the junior high track record in high jump with a jump of 5'10", but stopped after eighth grade. Why is Derek a shooter and not a high jumper? That is really interesting that, well, one, I want to know how you found that information because I would have been able to tell you how high I jumped in eighth grade, but that's a, you know, that's a, some digging or really good memory. <laughs> well done, Stu. Uh, that's, uh, that's awesome. No, um, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, I'm going to have to give two people credit in regards to the, how I shoot basketball. My dad did a great job early in life in two different things. He said, one, well, one, he, he gave me the foundation of how to shoot. So there comes a point, and as a coach myself, there's always a point where where kids stop listening to their dad. But up until that point, he put the foundation <laughs> of how to shoot a basketball in uh, so that he could hand the reins off to somebody else. And then the other thing he did was in his old man 40 and up men's league, he never, ever told me to watch him shoot. He always told me to watch one of his teammates shoot, who happened to have been Troy Love. Mm-hmm. Troy Love, you know, as you guys know, became my coach later in life, um, and he taught me how to shoot. So I watched how he shot. Um, you know, when it came to me jumping in middle school and me shooting the ball, uh, jumping and shooting are all in the same category. I wish I wish I could have kept high jumping. I enjoyed it, but uh, uh, basketball was my early passion and still is okay, today. Okay, okay. And uh, so just just to answer the the question, I was we uh, did track together, so I actually just remember that. I'm not sure if you could actually find that anywhere. Uh, you know, junior high track records or anything. <laughs> yeah, but, uh... I'm not sure if they're out there. <laughs> <laughs> but. Yeah, awesome. that leads me to my next question. So, uh, modeling is huge for many people. You know, seeing an example in others. You know, not a Zoolander, Blue Steel look uh, for those at home. So, <laughs> yeah, your dad and also his cousin Paul were and probably still are. Uh, you know, amazing basketball players. Uh, your dad even has a top Michigan rebound record for his season with 330, which is actually higher than former Clippers center Chris Kamen who was also from West Michigan and he only had 313. So uh your uh the skills definitely uh or the apple didn't fall too far from the from the tree as far as skills go. So uh tell us a, a bit about growing up with you know uh an NBA star in the family and your dad also played in in college too, right? Yeah, my dad played at uh, Grand Valley College at the time but now Grand Valley State University. Um So my, my, yeah, obviously my family was pretty well ingrained in basketball early. I mean, I grew up watching and hearing about my, my cousin Paul and my dad and what they did at Shelby. Um, And then my, my cousin went on to Western Michigan and onto the NBA for about eight years. He played and he played with Pistol Pete and, and some other, other uh, hall of famers along the way. But, you know, I, I was very lucky to hear and see and feel what that looked like and felt like, and was able to learn quite a bit from my dad um, and uh, my family. I mean, I had uncles that ended up or great uncles that ended up in the NFL. um, And, and so we were always surrounded by it. And, you know, it was, uh, it wasn't hard to, to catch on to it because my dad was also, and I don't know if you guys knew this, when we were probably in elementary school, my dad was the varsity coach at our high school. So, (laughs) you know, growing up, we had, we, 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 he was the varsity coach before Mike okay. Rowan. 
Um, so my dad's the one who, who passed the torch over to him. And so I grew up with a house full of, of basketball players and, and, you know, for team dinners and things like that. So, uh, I got to watch a lot of basketball early. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's huge too, especially just, just growing up and just being immersed in it too. Like that becomes part of your identity too. So like you kind of want to, uh, you know, assuming the upbringing is, is good and part of, you know, something that's compassionate and, you know, with, with love and everything too, you're just like, okay, well, this is kind of the family, uh so that that makes that makes a lot of sense it's it's harder for some who might not have that kind of upbringing too they have to find the passion somewhere else too so you had that uh as well uh so that's that's just a great kind of a uh kickstart essentially quick little fact uh so uh his cousin paul was one of the early bruise brothers which was uh in the spurs in the early 80s which I contend actually led to the bad boys of the Pistons. So that was uh, <laughs> six years later. So I think your your uh, your cousin Paul there might have started the Bruise Brothers, uh, and you know I think the the bad boys can can thank him for that. Sort of paved, <laughs> paved the way for the bad boys. I like it. Yeah. Uh, but no, that's uh, that's interesting. So uh, I'll just I'll just keep on rolling. So you helped essentially catapult the Nuggets youth program. So you were there for just over six years, right? Yeah, um, I started, I had a brief stint in, it must have been 2011, in early 2012, I uh, I worked for about three months in the sales department, uh, that's where I originally got hired by the, the Nuggets and the Avalanche, was to sell ticket packages, and that was kind of my, my foot in the door, um, you know, there was a, so when I moved to Colorado, I moved out here to uh, uh, pursue a few different things, and and long story short, I ended up, uh, you know, pretty much couch surfing and, you know, asking people if I could sleep on their floors. Wow. And uh, I slept, slept in my car at one point and 24 hour fitness. Uh, and then I got lucky and ran in and, and had a meeting with somebody that knew everybody. And I got uh, in touch with a Nuggets executive and there was a job opening, applied for it and got in. And that's where, oh, you know, as I as I got to know these executives over time, I figured that they hired me in the sales office knowing they were going to hire me as the director of their youth development program. They just wanted to see what kind of work ethic I had. So the, the sales department, I had to make cold calls, had to make about 250 cold well, calls a day trying to sell packages. Man. And, uh, it was the, it was the bottom of the industry, but, uh, uh, I really enjoyed my time in that. And then, you know, the, the other job came about and they offered me the position and, and, uh, and my orientation, uh, for that was basically a pat in the butt. Good luck, Derek. We don't have anything. You're going to build it. And, <laughs> and uh, we don't even know what the, they, they, they literally said, we don't know what it should look <laughs> like. Good luck. No pressure. No pressure. Yeah. Oh man. And, and, and I know you guys already mentioned the, 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 the success and, and how much failure builds success. Well, you know, when you have a, when you have a foundation like that, there was a lot of failing going on in the early days. I, uh, I learned a lot and, um, and uh you know how to run a business how to manage people how to hire people how to how to keep people motivated how to uh uh figure out what is in, in what a lot of people don't understand is the loopholes of working in pro mm -hmm. sports uh abiding by or abiding by brand names and boundaries uh, yeah. and and things like that i was in some pretty intense meetings early because i had no clue and there was no way i was supposed <laughs> yeah. to know things but i learned but uh, but but I learned, you know, I had an executive meeting. It was really uh, only about a 30 second meeting. Him and I had a great relationship. It was the CMO of of the, the Denver Nuggets at the time. And my banner for my existence said the word leagues on it, it said camps, clinics, training, uh, teams mm -hmm. and leagues. And that leagues word got me in so much trouble. I did not know it was going to. And it was above my head in the first place to even put the word league mm -hmm. on there. So then uh I didn't know that the Nuggets signed a like a, a multi-million dollar contract with the YMCA's who controlled the Junior Nuggets program which is a mm. youth league uh, and the and the YMCA thought they hired somebody to compete directly with oh. them and uh and that meeting had about yeah about 10 10 <laughs> f words <laughs> in about 30 seconds and basically uh had to had to basically the, the and, and this is where I tie sports into a lot of a lot of success is that when I was yelled at as a player, I never, you know, I was, 
I was allowed to yell back. Right. So I'm being yelled at by executives at this point. And I, you know, my initial knee jerk reaction is to right. fix it, <laughs> get it done. And, and that was that. So, um, you know, early in my, my nuggets career, I, I had a, I had, I was 24 when I got hired in there. Mm-hmm. So I was young at a director position and learned a lot in Man, those early days. Just through states, that says so. a, a lot about, I mean, their belief in you uh, and your character too, to be, you know, making these mistakes as, you know, 24 year old, that's, that's, that's really young. And they could have said, okay, well, this is too much. Maybe let's hire someone with more experience, but you know, that, that you were able to, you know, roll with it and show, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm going to accept this. I understand. I'm, I'm, I'm learning kind of a thing. And that's uh that says a lot about your, your character too, that, uh, it's such a big organization and they're like hey let's let's keep keep doing this so uh, let's do a quick ted tangent then if you if you don't mind uh what what no inspired problem. you to, to jump out to to colorado then and like you got kind of almost like a, a lewis house story if you were like if you know him like he was couch surfing too like what did you have a, a, a bigger goal and you're like i want to see this through or like what I mean, I have a lot of questions there. It's kind of loaded. What kept you going then? You're, you know, sleeping in the car and on couches and stuff. Then what were you? What was the, the pull that brought you out? Well, let's and and this is this is a pretty deep, deep moment in my in my path of life. So when I, I if you would have asked me my senior year of college if I would have ever left West Michigan, I would have said absolutely not. I love West Michigan. I love Michigan. I love. Uh, the Midwest. I had no intentions. In fact, I didn't know this. Calvin grads have this have this huge pipeline of graduating from Calvin and going to Denver. And I had no <laughs> clue why or who and why that existed. My the, the admin assistant in the athletic department of Calvin even said when I graduated, said, "Are you going to be one of those guys that moves to Denver?" And I said, "No. Why would I go to Denver?" <laughs> well, uh, it so so at this point, I met my now wife. And when I met her in college, she still had another year. So I stayed in Grand Rapids for about uh, until she got done and worked at uh, Pine Rest Children's Mental Hospital. And that's what I was doing uh, before I moved to Colorado. I was working in this uh-huh. children's hospital. Um, and while, while I was working there, my old college roommate, and you guys might remember Mr. Aaron yeah. Gowell, uh-huh. he, he was a, the D-League assistant coach for the okay. Colorado 14ers. While I was there and I was, as you said earlier, I was still playing at a competitive level um, and he convinced me to come out here for two reasons. He's he wanted me to try out for the team and he also wanted me to work with him in this youth basketball thing he had going on. And uh, and after my wife graduated, my lease was up. She decided to actually go to her hometown in Pennsylvania and then live with her sister in Paris. And. And then I said, all right, well, you know what, in, in my, the way my brain was working at the time was I wanted to be able to provide for my, for, for my future wife at the time. Um, and, and I knew West Michigan wasn't going to provide what I needed in the sports yeah. industry. Um, and that's where my passions lied. So my friend Aaron said that uh, he had a, he had a situation where I could crash with him and, and then uh, come out there and then I came out here and, and it wasn't everything he promised it would be. And, uh, and I found myself every morning and just to answer your question, that was kind of a, no, a roundabout good. to get to this was as I'm, as I'm in my struggles. So I'm out here and, and my family even warned me not to, but if I, if, if I have to be honest, uh, moving away from West Michigan, I don't know if you guys experienced the same thing. My family was yeah. not for it. Um, Ooh but they're not there anymore. That's the funny part is that none of (laughs) them live there anymore. Uh, They, they, they all moved to Florida. So, um, so me moving away was really like pulling teeth. So when I was sitting there and I remember being in a coffee shop one morning, cause that's where I could get internet. um, And I'm applying for jobs and, and my, my wife is telling me, Hey, just move back to Pennsylvania with my parents or, or I had all my stuff in my car. So I had my car packed full of stuff. I could have went home at any day of the week. I had my mom telling me to come home pretty much every other week. And, and I said, it, there was a bone in my body that just could re, just didn't want to admit yeah. defeat. Um, and I was going to give it an honest go. And I didn't even like Colorado at the time. So there was, you know, I didn't have, uh, I didn't have much family. I had one uncle out here, uh, who, who actually was really helpful during this time, but he, uh, 
but yeah, I was, I, you know, I was bouncing around for trying to crash on people's stuff. And, um, I, I felt like I had to see this through, through thick or thin. Yep. I could always drove yep. home any day of the week, but I just decided to tough it out. And then one day ran into a guy that graduated with me. His name was Kevin Rooney and Rooney. I, I, I said, Hey man, can I crash on your couch tonight? I hate to impose. And he goes, you know what? I got an extra room. Why don't you stay in there wow. until you get on your feet. And then from there, you know, the snowball started to roll with opportunity. And then once I got into the, the, the Denver Nuggets organization, I was never going to, yeah. I was never going to look back. Um, I was going to take that because, um, you know, there was an opportunity there I saw and felt, and, and I was very grateful and humbled yeah. by the whole yeah, that's, situation. Uh, that's and, a great story. Uh, I, I didn't even know that either. So I'm not sure how much, you know, research could have, uh, you know, helped with something that you might not have even, you know, talked about yeah, too much. Yeah, good for so, you, uh, Impressive. Uh, <laughs> But uh, that's that's related to the next question, actually, too, because that's that's kind of like that, you know, uh, luck comes to the prepared type of thing, which is maybe hard to some uh, for some to understand uh, if maybe, you know, starting something is too uh, too risky or, or seems too risky to them. But you were like, you know, you're you're a young guy. You're like, I'm going to I'm going to give it a go. You didn't have, you know, kids. And you're like, you could you could even afford to do that, too. And that's that's tougher for some people. But you know, years later, you, you know, you're, you're doing the youth program, you're with the Nuggets. How could you, you know, that now that, you know, your wife is out with you and things are, you're getting older, all that stuff. How are you able to de-risk the, the start of, you know, hardwood? Like how, how did you in your mind, you know, what did you know? It was like, okay, well now I can take this leap. You know, were you, were you doing it on the side? So that, that, uh, that that is a that is a great question to to what I give as advice for a lot of different things. But basically, what happened when I got got in with the Nuggets, my 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 end game when I first got hired was like a lot of young kids out there. I was going to be a professional basketball mm-hmm. coach. Uh, I was actually working my network and working my ways to be a player development coach mm-hmm. in the NBA, and I actually had a decent path to get there. Um, what I learned over time was. One, my last name doesn't carry any weight at any point in time. Uh, someone like Ty Lawson's brother or cousin could graduate from college and want my job, yeah. and they would give it to him at that moment when Ty Lawson was our all-star. Uh, and I learned, you know, dealing with pro athletes wasn't all that glamorous as you mm-hmm. would think it would be. And uh, um, and then I knew my passion was with kids. So having that been said, I I, I built the Nuggets. I will say this. The, the organization and the, and the process I work for, they learned a lot because their brand wasn't the Denver Nuggets brand. It was Derek Griffin. So as time went on and I'm running every single camp, training every single kid, uh, working, you know, for, for peanuts and working 60 hour weeks, 60 to 80 hour weeks every single week, uh, what you found was the following was with me. And it wasn't with the brand of the Denver Nuggets. So um, after working there for, and, and again, I'm not, I'm not diminishing that experience. I had a great experience. Uh, they sent me all over the world. I did camps in Greece uh, multiple years in, and uh, uh, that and the USA basketball thing. Cause at the same time, the Nuggets were allowing me to play on the national team and work no, at the no. same time. Um, which was really rare, but they promoted it. They thought it was really yeah. good for the brand, and um, uh, their, their director was a current player, and they and they they liked how I played, and and I thought I was a good role model for the kids I was seeing. But then again, you heard it, the 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 brand was my name, and I had a gym, and I still have it as my my main location in the nicest place in Colorado. Uh, in the easiest okay. place to get to. Uh, it's a place called Club Greenwood. And as, as okay, so we fast forward. I'm doing this. You're asking me about the risk to start my own thing. It was, it was, I was as good of a, in good of a situation as anyone could be for starting their own business. My contract was, was letting up. The executives that were once there had all left. A turnover mm-hmm. in the organization it went, went head over heels. So then all of a sudden, the new guys that came in had no clue who I was and what I did. Because um, my existence wasn't in an office. My ex- I was the yeah. community representative. So I was, in the, I was in the market. I was in the market. I was in the market. And when I came in, they were like, who are you? I'm like, seriously? 
I've been here for, you know, it's six years and grinding my life away. And you, I go, so my contract was up. They were in, in the way they proposed if me staying was not appealing. And, you know, I wasn't making enough money at that point in my life to, to, to be intrigued. So I basically went to the gym that I was operating out of and just said, Hey, do you mind if I just transition from the nuggets to my own name? And I had the relationship with them. So they were absolutely come on in. We want you. And then, um, at the same time, my wife was setting up my, my everything. We had everything, the website, the, uh, the platforms, the marketing, we were doing everything there. So as soon as I decided to cut loose, yeah. uh, wow. nothing changed wow. at all. Uh... Besides, <laughs> but besides the amount of money I was making, that was the only thing that would, that changed. And it was scary because at the time it was, it, I did the most stressful things, the three most stressful things all in the same month. I, I quit my job, started my own business, got <laughs> married and moved into a, all in the same month. And, uh, and it, it really, it, it, I mean, again, it was, it was a, it, but I'm, I've never, and, and I've operated out of this in my entire life, even today with the coronavirus, I, I have a hard time because my DNA is doing this. Anytime fear is, is put into my life, I, I always push, yeah. push at it. I, I'll either I'll either poke poke it in the in the in the chest. I'll either or, or I'll push through it, or I'll or I'll just do the opposite of it. Like it, fear does this weird thing to me, where if you present fear, even the coronavirus, I go, I'm not stopping anything, even though I've kind of been stopped mm-hmm. today. But um, I uh, it, when when it is the most terrifying thing I've heard, and I'm and I'm a huge advocate of starting your own business because, you know, I I have re- regret. And regret isn't is one of my biggest mm-hmm. fears, actually. Regret. Um, and it, if you're going to uh, operate out of out of fear, and then with regret later in life, then that's no, no. way to live at all. That's uh, that's interesting, like because because fear can be it's, it can be paralyzing for some people, or it can be motivating too. And and like how you are sometimes raised, and sometimes you can overcome those too, can really dictate how you how you respond to things too. And that's. That can be oftentimes, you know, the, or, you know, the maker of an entrepreneur too, like whether or not you can overcome things and just, you know, facing a fear uh, is, you know, its own skill <laughs> in itself. Uh, so you mentioned, you mentioned your wife too. I mean, she's kind of an entrepreneur as well. Personal health, uh, therapy coach, quite a few things. Did you recognize that in each other when you met and you know, how much have you helped each other balance entrepreneurship with raising a family? Cause that's certainly not an easy task. Well, I tell you, it's been, a, it's, a, you know, working with my wife has been, been really, we've been really lucky in regards to how the ebony and flows have been going. When I started, when I started my business at that time, she had a six figure uh, mar- oh, wow. marketing job for a real estate company that was, you know, we lived well within our means. So we were able to take that risk without a financial uh, fear because she was, but, but at the same time she mm-hmm. was pregnant. And, and we knew that eventually she didn't want to, uh, to work for this job because it wasn't very good and she didn't like it. So as soon as she stopped that, or we decided that my, my current job, my hardwood evolution was picking up enough where she could quit that job. Then she started her own business. That's where Mm. the nutrition came in. And then she's been building that. And then I have had hardwood and then hardwood's been building and then she's built another one in her hypnotherapy and, and she's, so our entrepreneurship. I don't think we knew it was uh, mm-hmm. existed early. Her dad was an entrepreneur, so she she always talked about that. Uh, I didn't have that. My family is as blue collar. You know, my dad a banker, my mom a nurse, my brother an accountant, my my sister a speech pathologist. Yep. They're they're blue collar and anything outside that, that you should you should that that conversation was interesting on itself. As they said, Derek, you'll never make money in sports. I mean, I don't know. Which how is funny coming from his, your cousin then, Paul too. Like you actually have it within your family. <laughs> well, well, it's 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 it, and and again at that point it wasn't playing. Even though playing for three mm-hmm. and three did make me money, uh, it was it was they 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 did not like the lack of security in that life. And 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 if you ask me, I always combated with, with this. I heard how much they yep. hated their yep. life, all of them. Uh, you know, and that's, and that was something that motivated me the most was I refuse. I absolutely refuse to wake up and hate my life. Like that is, 
that has got to be our foundation as a human uh, and, and what we aren't taught. And I take it to a Midwest or West Michigan life since you, we are all from there. I think that is, that is one of the under preached values uh, of that area is to work for yourself, be an entrepreneur, take risk early in life uh, before all the responsibilities chase you. And, and mm-hmm. so you can enjoy your every day. I mean, that has to be a foundation of teaching um, from, from yeah, where that's we something really up. huge there too, that stability doesn't mean happiness too. And you're kind of complied there too, that you can have this, this job, you can have the nine to five uh, and there's comfort and there can be kind of the lack of fear. So some people might avoid the fear, but they're not necessarily getting happiness in, in exchange. And even if you have the stability, we can see now with all these businesses shutting down, you know, even if you don't take your own risk and start your own business, you can lose the job too. So that's, that's a huge, that you, you had oh. that kind of uh, reverse modeling in a, in a sense. You saw essentially what, uh, you know, unlike basketball where it was what to strive toward, you saw you know, maybe what to avoid. Uh, and if we, if you don't mind, let's circle back to fear. And if you don't want to talk about it, if it's too personal, we can always cut it. Uh, but, <laughs> let's go. Uh, oh, let's so dive in. Let's dive in. A family member fear. of yours was in a plane crash uh, growing up when you were young. Uh, can you tell us how that affected you growing up? And deep dive, do you think it in any way, subconsciously or consciously, affected your decision to go uh, to a college at a smaller regional school versus a larger one that might have had, you know, flights between games? Um. Okay, so you're talking about my uncle Brad Griffin. He uh he was the uncle that lived uh-huh. that lived in Colorado. So so it's really interesting that that you bring him up because the plane crash was pretty traumatizing to me as an early adult. Uh, I think when I was twenty years old, nineteen or twenty, I vowed yep. never to fly again. Um, I, you know, it went nine 11 and my uncle had already gotten the plane crash and, and, and it yeah, was I mean, terrifying. Mine was I hated flying. You remember and, that from and, 97? Right after that, my, my yep. family was like, let's go oh, to yeah. Sweden. And I was like, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Seriously. I, I, when I was playing basketball at Muskegon community college, I, uh, I got I got selected to the all American all-star game in Dallas, um, after my second year. And I told them. I go, can I, can I drive? Can I drive? They're like, we're going to buy you a plane ticket. I was like, yeah, can I drive? And, and, and they said, no, because of liability, you need to take this flight. So literally I, 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 at that point in my life, I was never going to fly again, but that's, that's a separate story. So my uncle, so my uncle did have a, a big impact in my life. It wasn't the, the, the plane crash though. The plane crash did uh, spur his oh, entrepreneur okay. life. Uh, because he he survived. He was I don't know how much details. He was one of 50 people of the 200 people on the yep. on the plane that survived. And then he took the settlement and started investing into oh, his own business wow. and uh, and and some real estate and things like that. So my uncle, when I moved out here, he I mean, I remember the, one of the first things he said to me, how proud he was of me to make that move because he knows how difficult yeah. it was for the family to see it happen because he his whole life uh, has had to deal with that stigma of moving away from the West Michigan place. So, um, he, he had a big influence. He, he preached, uh, working for myself from day one. And the sad part was he ended up dying of cancer. Um, uh, man, it's been about six or seven years now. Uh, but up until that point, he was a huge advocate of, uh, of, of doing what you wanted to do and truly loving what you did. Cause he, he practiced and preached that and succeeded in that. And in the in the catch 22 of what we are taught and saying that security is, you know, it, having a safe job is secure, um, but it, it doesn't allow for for any sort of well mental or financial growth for the most part. Um, and and I think uh, my uncle had a massive impact on what I've done out here um you know, ever since I moved out here, but growing up, he was a huge advocate. And then, you know, choosing to go to Calvin College um, was 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 a multi, you know, okay. there was a lot of reasoning to go to Calvin. I had I had other options, but at the end of the day, I, I had hung up the the dream of playing in the NBA and I wanted a good education. And Calvin had a very good pipeline and 
uh, to be honest, the, if it wasn't for Calvin's network, I would have never gotten hired um, by, yeah, yeah. by the it's Denver Nuggets in the first out. place. So. Uh, we, got, uh, we got time for a couple more questions. I'm going to switch it over to Jeff. Uh, and let him run with Yeah, let me ask you this, Derek, since uh, you briefly started to touch on it, but with the millions of businesses having been affected by lockdowns this spring with coronavirus, what's been your toughest challenge adapting to or not being able to coach in person? Well, this is, you know, as as a coach, you know, at heart and a former uh, player, when 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 we are stopped, when some when there's when there's something that is stopping you from mm-hmm. succeeding, you you pivot, right? You keep re- using the word pivot, or you adapt. You you know, as a coach, you call a timeout, and then you you make your your adjustment. Uh, it's funny as the coronavirus started to creep into the to the talk. So early March, you would have heard me exactly. very loud about I'm not stopping a thing. In fact, I was the last organization to host a tryout here. I had 400 people signed up for our tryout and everyone else canceled. <laughs> and I said, no, we're pushing through this thing. Um, and we got through our trial, which uh, pushed to the very end until my gym told me I wasn't, I couldn't come back anymore. And then the next day I went outside and then <laughs> they shut the parks down. And then I ended up, and then I ended up in my, you know, across the street from my house, I have a little park in our, in our subdivision. And there's a hoop and I've been, you know, I've been working there, but that was very minor to what the actual adjustment was. Immediately. I said, I can't, I'm not built to sit at home and wait this thing out. Uh, my wife and I put together a, a digital oh, program wow. in a heartbeat. I, we put in, we put in, cause you know, for the time we had, I only had a few days to use a gym and I used it and I used it for hours and hours and hours. And we built in a massive digital program and then Good. we launched it and got immediate response from our, uh, and, and, uh, and so that's where we've been operating right now. We did a Facebook live workout last week that got a good amount of people to join from all over. Well, we, oh, wow. we had international people joining next, uh, let's see a week from Friday. We're going to, we're going to, I'm partnering with my people that I know in Greece. We're going to do a co coaching, uh, live oh, wow. workout with the Greeks and the Americans together. And, and, and so, um, immediately we've had Ooh, to adapt cool, and go into the digital um, realm. To touch a little further on the hardwood evolution there, kind of transition into that. And it's a little broader, but what would you say is a goal you have for hardwood evolution this year? Oh, this year, okay. my first goal would be to actually get back <laughs> yeah. into a gym. Jeez. I, I, that, that will be my, my immediate goal is to get going again. Cause as, as, as the dominoes fell, as everything was built up, our momentum out here was so big. Uh, we, we've always had the number one training program. We have had to, scr- we've had to scrap and claw and be the best club mm-hmm. team in the, in the names I'm competing against. Um, and, and the difference between me setting up shop in West Michigan and me setting up shop in Denver is that when I came to Denver, I have to, I have to fight the, uh, Chauncey Billups, the, uh, Jason Richardson's, the oh, Keith yeah. Van Horns, the Earl Boykins, they all have established programs out here. And so when I came out here, I had, I had a long ways to go, but we have done our job and we have gotten to that point of now we mm-hmm. are, you know, sponsored by Adidas and, uh, and, and we're right there at top, at the top level. Our, our teams are, are for the most part, boys and girls, the best in Colorado and, and, uh, few, few yep. age levels we won't win. So, um, it has, it has been a process out here to get there, but it's, uh, it's been, uh, it's, it's been a combination of hiring the right people, um, and having the right structure and philosophies. Perfect. Those yeah. That was my next thing. I was going to ask if there was any, level. you know, key differentiators that kind of separated you from some of these other like Chauncey's training programs. Um, well, the training program, there's, there's nobody yeah. that comes within a, a whisper of us. We've, uh, um, that's where I, okay. I built our foundation was player development. That's I, I, I didn't have a team. Uh, I didn't have a team four years yep. ago. I had zero teams. It was only training and camps and that's the way I wanted it. But then, uh, there came a point where I was so disgusted in what other programs were doing with my kids that I was training that I go, I'm going to make a team for you. One team turned to two teams, two to four. And then <laughs> now we're at about wow. 30. Um, and, and so it's, it's, it's taken off in the right direction, but we've put our key foundation in, into just working hard. Um, we, we want to out tough everybody. I I'll teach you how to play basketball, but it's the mentality in which we teach our, our kids to play. Uh, and, and it's funny cause we've, we've already touched on it once. 
uh, my kids know that mm-hmm. I want fearlessness <laughs> and hard work, and that's it. I, I want you to play as hard as you can against anybody, and it doesn't matter who steps on the floor. I don't want you. I don't want to see or smell fear for a half second because yep. they would hit the benches so fast if I did. <laughs> so that's kind of the foundation cool. we put well, our. That is our, very our uh, Mamba Academy from the <laughs> yeah, it is. You got training. You've got you've got uh, teams. You know, I, you know, R.I.P. Kobe. But I mean, that's. You know the way you're talking about fear, and we touched on it before, but just the way you just related it back to the uh, the training programs and, and the teams, that's uh, that's fantastic. That's huge. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny you brought you, you bring up Mamba because the name of our girls program up to this year, because once we had a sponsor, we had to, we had to shift oh. it was called Mamba Hardwood. Um, and in in the reason why we called them that, and this is a kind of a side story. Uh, Jewel Lloyd, who was a number one draft pick in the WNBA a few years ago out of Notre Dame, is a, is a friend of mine through USA Basketball. And she is deemed the gold mamba for the girls' side. Her and Kobe yeah, were – she that. spoke at Kobe's uh, mm-hmm. funeral. Um, they, she asked me if – I if she wanted or if I wanted to be sponsored mm-hmm. by her program and it was uh, sponsored by Kobe. So um, at one point we said yes. And we, and, and, and then it ended up uh, Kobe ended up going um, into his own direction after he retired. So we ended up keeping the name Mamba Hardwood for the girls, but we didn't end up uh, taking well, the sponsorship from uh, Jewel. But uh, uh, but, uh, yeah. you know, the mentality was there. It's always been there and it's, uh, you know, always be there. Kobe's uh, did his work and, and his, oh, yeah. and his, wow. his fingerprints are all over our That's program. Awesome. Seriously. Yeah. The world. Um, yeah, man, and we can wrap it up here, but uh, spend the last few minutes here with a little sharing. If you have any events or launches coming up that you'd like to mention, any shout outs, anything like that? Yeah, man, we would like to uh, definitely talk about our digital program. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's unique. It's different. I've, I created a, uh, another business called Pro Shot X. It's a shooting system that I've developed that basically uh, created a platform where you send me your shot from four different angles and I will break it down to the very micro level and tell you what's wow. wrong with it and tell you how to fix it. Um, that coupled with my uh, ball handling and attacking has been the kind of the foundation of our training, but now it's at a digital level. Now people can send me because shooting mm-hmm. was always my thing and it still continues to be my thing. And what we want to do is create this platform for people. Cause I've gotten that question a million times over the years, Derek, can you take a look at my shot? Derek, can you take a look at my shot? Now we have a digital platform where you can send me their shots. So we, you know, I would, uh, I would always recommend mm-hmm. take a look at that. It's called pro shot Um, and uh, it's it's a part in partnership with Hardwood Evolution, so you can find that on either or Perfect. that That's website. I'll, or I'll link to it. Uh, uh, we'll do a little blog follow up, and we'll put links in the. Uh, in the bottom there for everybody to check it out. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, I want to, you know, we're, we're, we got plenty of time here, so I'll, uh, we'll, uh, like Jeff said, cut, uh, cut it here and let you get back to uh, doing your, your work and managing clients and hanging out with the family and whatnot. So, uh, you know, a, a thousand thank yous for, for jumping on. This was fantastic. Uh, yeah, man. Really appreciate better it. Better than I thought it would be <laughs> uh, too. A lot of uh, small worlds and interesting tangents there. And I think, that's something that should hopefully resonate with a lot of people too, that, you know, we're all, you know, multifaceted and we start digging in and really analyzing ourselves and talking to other people who have kind of goals. You'll find that there's a lot that you can, that, that can resonate with, with other people out there. Once you start really taking that risk and pushing past fear. Yes. I, uh, I, well, one, I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you guys. It's always a pleasure. And, and next time, uh, we're all in Whitehall or I love West it. Michigan, we need to get together for a drink, but, uh, um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's really interesting what happens when you when you really dig in and why we are who we are and, and what we need to continue to do. But and more importantly, in my realm, uh, how to teach that mindset consistently because um, it's paid it's paid off in so many different ways for me and my family and my happiness and my soul. When you know what you're doing is is what you're supposed to be doing, your life looks a lot different than yeah, that's uh, huge. Uh, going against that grain. That's perfect, perfect way to sum it up. So. Uh, thank you again, Derek. Uh, and yeah, everybody who's listening, check out the I appreciate the it, guys. And best of luck. And hopefully you can get back in the gym as soon as possible.